The college football world is at war. That's right, college football global imperialism. It all started with 126 FBS teams, and they all battled it out across all seven continents and the oceans. One team is going to be able to walk away from this imperialism and say that they were champions of the world. Question is, who's going to get the bragging rights? Every team was able to steal players and bolster their roster, and then in addition, add two campus legends to join them in the fray. Let me introduce you to the teams. Starting off with the victor from the Asia campaign, it's the Arizona Wildcats. They won three games and decided to steal these three players from the Big 12, Travis Hunter, Ollie Gordon, and Beanie Bishop. And without further ado, let me introduce you to the campus legends as voted by you. Our first one on deck for Arizona is Rob Gronkowski. This man needs no introduction. You all know Gronk. Drafted in the second round of the NFL Draft in 2010, he racked up 16 touchdowns in two seasons for the Wildcats. The campus legend on defense is Scooby Wright. Scooby was U of A's sixth unanimous All-American in 2014. Unfortunate injuries interrupted his career, but in 2014 at 163 tackles, not to mention 14 sacks. On the map, starting out in Asia, your Arizona Wildcats are a 95 overall with 99 offense, 93 defense. The Ball State Cardinals, they won two games in their campaign, but because of the group of five multiplier, they're able to steal four guys. They got Marcus, Trayvon, Kenyon, and Kenny H. Kenyon was a round one DB to the Eagles this year. Those are definitely some dudes, but the first campus legend to reveal for Ball State is Blaine Bishop, a safety from Tennessee. Blaine Bishop's in the Ball State Hall of Fame. He went on to play many years in the NFL, including four Pro Bowl seasons. Your next campus legend was Willie Sneed, who went on to have production at the NFL level. He ranked second place in all-time receiving yards for Ball State and also had 26 touchdowns. With an 88 overall across the board, they're going to be a tough out. Moving on to our friends from Europe, we had Hawaii come out on top. Hawaii had three wins out of the Mountain West, but with a times two multiplier, they're able to steal six players and they got some solid picks here across the board but Ashton Genty is going to be a difference maker. Speaking of difference makers the first campus legend as voted by you all RIP Colt Brennan. This man practically broke every Hawaii quarterback passing record. In fact, he was in the Heisman conversation twice and racked up over 14,000 passing yards, 131 touchdowns. And on defense, the pick was Isaac Sopaga, a two-time All-Mac player and drafted in the fourth round by the Niners. A key piece of the Hawaii defense and a contributor for nine years in the NFL. Through all the conquests, they were able to bring up their team to a 90 overall. I guess I'm bad at the alphabet because I skipped over E, and E is for East Carolina. It was awfully fitting to see the Pirates in the Pacific. They got three wins, which allowed him to steal six players. Couple notable call-outs here. They have a new quarterback in Frank Harris, the lefty slinger from UTSA. Now, the exciting part to me is the campus legends. We got CJ 2K out here. He ran a 4-2-4 at the Combine and put up 1,400 yards, 17 touchdowns on the ground in his senior season. On defense, we got a big boy in the trenches. It's Limval Joseph. Spent four years at East Carolina. He rapidly ascended up the ranks. When it was all said and done, he got drafted in the second round by the Giants. East Carolina's up to an 88 overall. Now kicking it down to Antarctica, Old Miss claimed this frozen chunk of ice. With two wins, they were able to steal Jaden Daniels and Brock Bowers. Talk about loading up an offense, but what about campus legend A.J. Brown back in action? This absolute threat for the Eagles set the school record for receiving yards and most 100-yard receiving games. Hide your defense because Jaden Daniels, A.J. Brown, and Brock Bowers are coming. On defense, how about a consensus All-American and Pro Football Hall of Famey? That's right, we got Patrick Willis back out here manning it down at linebacker. Upgrades bring Ole Miss up to 95 overall. Out of North America, the Texas State Bobcats ran over the Sun Belt. Don't be sleeping on these guys as they had five wins to get to this point. With the times two multiplier, that's 10 players to steal. It's a long list. Jason Henderson tops that list. For the Bobcats offensive campus legend, it goes all the way back to 1980, Ricky Sanders, number 83. Ricky led the Bobcats to back-to-back D2 national championships in 1981 and 1982. He holds a lot of records for the Bobcats and then went on to win two Super Bowls. And then on defense, you got David Mayo, Sunbelt Defensive Player of the Year in 2014, and then got drafted in 2015 by Washington. Texas State looking to be a dark horse, 91 overall. And then when we jump over to Africa, we see the University of North Carolina. North Carolina had an easy one, just one game, the championship, and was able to steal Peyton Wilson, one of the best linebackers out there. North Carolina's first secret weapon to reveal is none other than Eric Ebron, the campus legend, is returning. He left school and declared for the draft early but it didn't take away from any production he was able to put up here. On defense is none other than the machine, Julius Peppers. The man played football and basketball for UNC, but was a unanimous All-American here. Second all-time in UNC history for most sacks in a career. North Carolina with a 93 overall, always a threat to do some damage. Across the Atlantic to South America, USC came out on top here. With four big wins, they got some really good Big Ten players. And a new quarterback in Michael Penix Jr. That's right, no Caleb Williams back there. And who's that at running back? It's Reggie Bush. 
one of the college football all-time greats, is back for World War action with his Heisman Trophy in hand. Another iconic figure out here on defense, it's Troy Polamalu. Probably the early favorite to win it all. They're at 99 overall. Last but not least, hailing out of Australia, the land down under Western Kentucky took care of business with Conference USA. Three wins, times two multiplier, six dudes coming over. Western Kentucky's campus legend is none other than the bulldozer, Tyler Higby. Hilltoppers have produced a couple good tight ends that have panned out in the NFL, and Higby's continuing with the tradition. On defense, we welcome D'Angelo Malone, the all-time sack leader. He has 34 of them puppies and was drafted by the Falcons. Coming in at 86 overall, solid yet still underdogs. The stage is set. It's time for all-out world war. Let's kick it off with Hawaii. The Warriors are ready to go to war. In oh snap, they're going to have to go up against the Wildcats. The stakes are super high as every game is one and done. Colt Brennan and Hawaii have been stifled by this Arizona offense and their attack is too strong. Over 630 yards of offense today. Everyone's getting involved. Big Rob Gronkowski lining up at halfback. They're just giving him the rock. I guess what the game is saying is that Rob Gronkowski in college is a cheat code, and there's another touchdown. Mick Millen here with his third touchdown of the day, over 200 yards receiving. Offense is really no match. It's hard to keep up for Colt Brennan, and he gets a nice play there. And a handoff to Ashton Genty up the middle. That's a deck by Scooby Wright. Scoob's all over that tackle, and it's nice to see the legends making a difference. If there's any shot at a comeback, it needs to be right here, right now. And what a dot from Brennan. Chucky Hines for six. When the smoke clears, you can't blame Colt for the performance today. 330 yards, three touchdowns. Big opportunity here to get off the field. Let's see what the defense dials up. And goodness gracious, Wildcat Nation, your team is cracked. Hawaii knows it too. They're punting on fourth down. They're kind of conceding with three minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Don't blame them. It's been honestly a offensive shootout. Last drive, really playing for pride here at this point. Colt Brennan on fourth down finds his man. First and goal with under a minute to go. And he's looking for someone, anyone. He found a man for six. Are you serious? How did he connect? Bro, Colt is out here making magic happen for Hawaii. Like it's all because of him and his quarterback play. They put up 35. And Arizona is headed on to the next round with now seven teams remaining. Hawaii has been eliminated and the global conquest continues on. Moving on down the wheel here. Let's see who we got next. The Pirates. Let's go ahead and have them sail up north to face Texas State. And as we expected, we do have a good one on our hands here. It's Grayson McCall keeping it himself. The Coastal Carolina transfer to Texas State. Big first down. Can't forget about your legend Ricky Sanders on the outside. Instead, they go with the other receiver number four. 15 all the way to the house. Bobcats were a sneaky play in the North American campaign, but they have their eyes set on the prize, global domination. Quick change of field here, and Texas State is back in the red zone. This East Carolina defense led by Linval Joseph is having a hard time penetrating. Texas State doesn't have a ton of flashy dudes, but they have solid overall players all across the board. And on that note, talk about a McCall to Neal connection here. Not the flashiest, but it works. His sixth touchdown pass of the day. Man, I'm really surprised things aren't working out better here for East Carolina with Frank Harris from the Roadrunners just going down. Big sack from James Carpenter. Who knows, maybe they were over relying on CJ2K and it got them into a bad pinch when with that screenplay, they'll get some back. That was none other than David Mayo, Texas State campus legend, and East Carolina's gonna keep their drive alive. Down by three possessions if they get the two-point conversion every time. But to me, I'm seeing an inspired Texas State defense. Let's see if they can finish the job today. That was Jason Henderson, excuse me. That is David Mayo decking him for the turnover. Shot out of a cannon here, David Mayo just punished him. Frank, you might wanna try something else because keeping it yourself isn't working. Well, if East Carolina's a one and done here, at least Chris Johnson found pay dirt. Playing till the final whistle here and Frank just runs him over, flicks it out to the running back and that's a first down conversion. With all of earth on the line, I guess you don't play until the final whistle is blown. And look at Chris Johnson just stay up. Looks like our guy there had over 100 rushing yards and 64 receiving yards. And what in the world was that? No shade on Frank Harris here, but I don't know. Was he the right guy for the job? I mean, he's still playing his heart out to the very end. Truthfully, it was more than likely a defensive implosion that caused all of this. And that strip sack fumble is going to ice this one for sure, for sure. All right, Texas State Bobcats continue to keep the winning tradition alive. They won the most amount of games in the regular Continental Imperialism. And 
and now they're off 1-0. Once more, we will determine who is going to face off in this one. It's Ole Miss. Coming up out of Antarctica, they're going to have to go straight up to face UNC. Defense really came to play for both teams today. It's 2019. UNC's up, and that's a nice snag right there. Jaden Daniels delivered a ball on that last one here, and he's going back to work with the read option, keeping it himself with a lot of space and the speed. Can he go? Almost off to the distance. Second and 12, another read option. He's just going to keep it and then flick it out to the other running back. And that's a touchdown for number 40, Matt Jones. Good leadership out here from Jaden Daniels as he made the right call and got it over to the right man. North Carolina's no pushover, especially with guys like Eric Ebron lining up. And oh man, that's a big sack on Drake May. You can just feel the intensity in these matchups as there is so much on the line. And that is the wrong time to throw a pick. Tried to force it to Ebron. Come on now. It's just unfair when you bring a pro football Hall of Famer back down to Ole Miss. He's making plays for his alma mater. But the turnover and the celebration was shortly lived here because because UNC is all the way down into the red zone again. Big third down right here, right now. The defense is swarming. They strip him, and he loses the ball. Another huge turnover for the defense. Julius Peppers and the Tar Heels need a three and out, but they're not going to get one. Brock Bowers, first down. Clock is ticking. They need a stop here if they're going to have a shot, and A.J. Brown muscles his way forward for the first down. Man, this is so much fun. You see stolen players and campus legends all coming out to ball today. Bad news for North Carolina is that Ole Miss is chewing up all that precious time. If somehow you can hold them to a field goal, you'll be fine, but nope, you give up the touchdown, Jaden Daniels. Tar Heels cooking up a rapid fire drive though, so hold on now, don't count them quite out yet, and uh, oof. Could have got himself in some trouble there forcing that. And he's going to go towards the end zone. That's Ebron hauling in first and goal. Yo, 207 yards and a touchdown today for Eric Ebron. He has been a menace for UNC. But unfortunately for them, they're down two possessions here with a minute to go. Even with this touchdown, yeah, they had to force a timeout on that last one. So only one timeout left here, minute to go. Touchdown, Kamari Morals. It's all up to this onside kick, and they do not get it. Wow, oh wow. <laughs> this has been quite the campaign early in three games right now. We've had some just interesting storylines all brewing. This is an updated look at the map. And here we go round and round Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Let's have some fun. Sending the Australia Victor to the left and up. And that's pointing at the Arizona Wildcats in their 99 overall offense. So yeah, another 600 plus yard day for Arizona. These guys are looking seriously scary with how many points they're putting up per game. Hailing from the Big 12, they got guys like Ollie Gordon, Travis Hunter, not to mention Rob Gronkowski, and what is going on here? Backups in and Scooby delivering blows. Scooby versus Higby, campus legends are seriously proving to make an immediate difference. Arizona's offense is a machine, and they're just going to have fun. We'll have to see how Arizona does against teams like Old Miss or uh, USC for that matter. Hilltoppers though, man, I can't believe it was this lopsided. And hey, well at least they get a little pride. Not much opportunity to see guys like Higby in this one since they've been down with the back against the wall can't even get past three and outs right now in fact Arizona just passed the 700 yard threshold so yeah it's definitely scary hours out here as anyone and everyone's open why the heck not Arizona and their backups go ahead and give them some points too huh third and goal just up the middle it's easy yeah that was a bloodbath uh, unfortunately for the Hilltoppers they never really stood a chance in this one Jaden Delora and the Wildcats just cooked and then there were four. Who's it gonna be? Old Miss has to prove themselves again. Let's go ahead and spin that wheel. Up north is a date with the Wildcats. This game has been a lot of fun. For two teams with 99 overall offense, the defense has really been the story. And on fourth down here, Jaden Daniels, Heisman winner, off to the races again. 257 rushing yards for Ole Miss. Now this is where the rubber meets the road. Who is going to walk away victorious? Ole Miss down within the red zone here, only down by four points. Arizona defense forces Ole Miss to a gun empty look here across the middle. Touchdown, pay dirt found by Ulysses Bentley IV. Big games require big time playmakers and that's exactly what just happened right here. How will Arizona be able to respond? A third and seven handoff draw? That's confusing, I'm not gonna lie. I get the fact that Arizona has Ollie Gordon 
Gordon, but seriously, when you're down back against the wall, that's not what you do. I look up and down this offense and I see weapons everywhere, yet they choose to hand off when you got guys like Brock Bowers and AJ Brown. This field goal doesn't do a whole lot because you'll only be up by six and a touchdown still beats you. Patrick Willis led defense doing a lot to stop this offense and Arizona is struggling right now in the fourth and there he is back on offense for Daniels in the read option has been money all game long you already know in EA college football 25 I'm taking the read option all the way with Avery Johnson and the K-State Wildcats if you want the smoke online all you got to do is just say so Anyways, things are looking bleak here for Arizona, and they can't even get the stop. First and goal. Wow, 661 yards today for Ole Miss. Arizona only had 340. So it looks like it's about time to say goodbye to Scooby Wright, Rob Gronkowski, and, and Travis Hunter. Unless a miracle turnover happens right here, but Jaden says, no, sir, dagger in ya. I don't know what happened to Arizona's offense here in the fourth quarter. It was close, but Jaden Daniels and Ole Miss ran away with it. Just like that out of Antarctica and Africa, Ole Miss all of a sudden is gonna have Australia, Asia, and Europe. Man, oh man, they run the whole Eastern Hemisphere now. Now there are four teams left and it's gonna be Ball State. Let's see where the Cardinals need to go in this one. Okay, in my opinion, straight down means South America. Oh my goodness, things are getting wacky and wild out here. They have a chance to shock the world. Ball State out of the max, somehow going toe for toe with USC. I'm afraid, I don't know how long that'll last. When we talk about weapons, I think a USC, not Ball State. I mean, there goes Reggie Bush. Man has 199 yards and two touchdowns on the day. You can't keep him down. Nine yards per clip, yet they're still losing by two somehow. I am intrigued to see what is going to happen in this one. And on this last stop, we can't ignore the fact that Blaine Bishop came up and made the tackle. Four-time Pro Bowler, the five foot nine safety. What a stud. The fate of the globe is in the balance right now. Off his back foot. They're going to get the stop. Ball State, I don't know what you guys got left in the tank, but you need to bring it right here, right now. Fourth down, and they get the stop. It's a turnover. Clayton Cole answers the call, and here we go. Second and two. Can Hatcher in the Cardinals work it? And Paul Amalo says, no way. All right, I showed love to Ball State, but I got to show love to Paul Amalo too. And jeez, man. All right, USC clamps down. They're going to get the ball back. Underdogs and Cinderella stories across the nation, man, holding our breath. Unless you're a Trojan fan, when you see 99s across the board, everyone wants to take you out, and here comes Ball State. And back and forth we go. The ball's coming back to the Cardinals. They can't feel comfortable with a two-point cushion. I can imagine that much. Number three of the offense versus number three of the defense. My eye's on it, but they're going to go to the tight end here, and that was a good play. Lane Hatcher with 369 passing yards, three passing touchdowns against a 99 defense. Where are all my Ball State fans? I hope you all are turning up right now. Drama intensifying, handoff. It's going to be a third and six. And Willie Sneed with 192 yards and two touchdowns today. Yeah, that man is cooking for his alma mater. And big number 98, the field goal kicker, needs this three-point cushion, and he's got it. Now up by five, Trojans need a touchdown. They got some time to do it. Big third down here, Penix Jr. needs to step it up, and it's going to be fourth and short. Wow, really, on fourth and one, they choose to punt. They did not trust their loaded offense with Branch, Reggie Bush, Penix Jr. Okay, then. Instead, they let Ball State with two and a half minutes left try to ice this one out, and that's another good carry. If Ball State comes through, I'm going to need someone to go ahead and snag me a Lane Hatcher jersey. What am I talking about? I mean, this is insane. One first down, and it's over. Here we go, Lane. What do you got for us? It's going to be a slip screen, and he's short. Here's the snap, the kick. Does he have the leg? He's got it. Oh, man, I can't believe it. Just 11 seconds away from sweet, sweet victory for Ball State. I thought these words would never come out of my mouth. What is going on, man? USC, I'm telling you. How would it have gone if Caleb Williams was in there? Yes, I do think he's a little underrated here in college football revamped, but one last play. Hail Mary interception. That officially seals it. Ball State, and there is Bishop, their defensive legend. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding me, man? Someone go ahead and snag me a Willie Sneed or Lane Hatchet jersey if you're feeling generous, man. I, I can't believe it. My condolences to USC fans, but folks, this is why I love college football. Final three here. It's back to Ball State. They have to prove it once more after that heroic win. Arrow determines if it's a Texas State or Old Miss. And uh-oh, it's Old Miss. Ball State, can you guys handle two 99 overall offenses? I'll lose my drawers if that happens. So you're telling me there's a chance right now. Ball State. 
down by a touchdown, cruising right into the red zone, short by a yard. These Cardinals got massive huevos right now, and they're going for it on fourth and one. So, uh, man, impressive stuff from Ball State as Willie Sneed just hauls it in and gets first and goal. The way Ball State has been playing and how clutch they have been is inspirational, to say the least. It's been a true David and Goliath matchup the whole way, and look at Lane Hatcher, man. That is called grit, determination, fight. Lane Hatcher was not a stolen player, campus legend, nothing, but I gotta show this dude some respect. Look at the grittiness fighting for this touchdown. He even got rocked. Buddy is seriously putting it on the line as if the whole world depended on it. Oh wait, it does. And hello, Kenyon Mitchell. Oh my goodness. Your eyes are not deceiving you. You're seeing exactly what I'm seeing in real time right now. Who are the Cardinals, and why have I never heard of her? I'm going to literally start blushing here in a second if they keep playing this hard. Getting all hot and bothered watching an underdog from the MAC just absolutely put a whooping on Ole Miss. Yo, I got to do something special for Ball State if they can pull this thing out. I'm not kidding. Heck, maybe they're my first rebuild of the new game. Maybe I do something special now. I don't know. Really don't want to get ahead of myself with a loaded team like Ole Miss right now. But it's safe to say they're earning my respect play by play right now, and that field goal gives them the lead. Jaden Daniels, it's not the time to go silent now you've been coming up in the clutch in your other games and there you go that's a connection that'll get things moving bro since when did the mac go so hard i mean that's what i was expecting to see gash play after gash play like that Jaden daniel's starting to cook a little bit now and they're getting closer to the red zone safe to say old miss is in field goal range but uh ball state does want that stop unfortunately it's first down come on ball state defense don't give up on me now all right cards this is probably going to be a touchdown here in just a matter of moments minus three yards really doesn't mean anything when you're already this close He's got all day to throw, too. Third and goal. This looks like another split backfield potential option. No, it's a slip screen. Anyone there to sniff it out. And hello, there we go. Fourth and goal. Cardinals going wild on defense. Both teams still got all their timeouts, so really anyone can do some damage as soon as they get their hands on the ball. And man, these Cardinals don't want a three and out right here. That's the last thing you want, guys. And oh, that's even worse. That is deflating. Oh, no. Pick six. Congrats, Ole Miss fans, but that is a heartbreak. That was heartbreaking for all Cinderella Story fans out here and Ole Miss starting to put it on. Just got to find your inner lane, Lane, and see what you can do. Slip screen, that's just not a good call. Fourth and 17, it's literally hoping for a miracle at this point. Just chuck one up, big fella, and you throw a pick. I thought he had a step there for a second. And it's official. Man, we can put a close on that exciting chapter. Ball State, thanks for the memes. Unfortunately, that is a closing chapter as Old Miss has everything minus North America and the Pacific Ocean. So it's up to Texas State to make a stand because this is the championship game for global imperialism. Don't know if it really matters because they're playing on the college football championship site, but this is for home field advantage. I just want to take a moment and recognize Texas State from the Sun Belt getting this far to the championship game for all of Earth. Global imperialism It's a massive accomplishment getting this far and Ole Miss has ruined some people's day on the journey. Oh, <laughs> Oh my gosh, what am I watching right now? 51-34 Texas State. This has been an incredible run for the Bobcats. Just settling for their three points in this hazy college football playoff stadium. But dude, the Bobcats are putting a whoop in 54 points and getting a third down stop right here. Old Miss literally thinks they have time left or something they're down by 20 three touchdowns essentially and they're punting it back to texas state this is crazy though grayson mccall having a great game out here i think texas state since they won so many games they were able to steal so many players and round out this roster they're a 91 overall for a reason and grayson mccall's out here throwing for over 450 passing yards and he dumps that one off they're just short no need to get greedy if you're the bobcat so they'll just punt it back the real question is here is old miss gonna kick it up a notch now they do have the time and the time to get it going if they really wanted to and that's what i'm really out here looking to see if they have what it takes to finish this thing and wow brock bowers in motion here the pressure is on for Jaden daniels as he's gonna throw it out to his running back honestly if i'm the coach right now i'm getting a little bit more urgency for my guys like this is crunch time folks first and goal they're about to cut this thing down to a two touchdown deficit with five minutes to go daniels maintains balance and fights for that you know here on second and goal daniels wants to keep it mayo denies him 
him and there's the all campus legend making things difficult here third and goal that is gonna get in for the end zone touchdown critical third down here for Ole Miss defense it's a handoff draw and I think they stop him short and here we go it's not over yet by any means Daniel stepping up going across midfield got his lunch pail opened I'm surprised he was able to rally the troops back to the line and snap this one off as he goes for a big play and forces that into the danger zone bobcat interception was this the moment right here where global imperialism was secured number one gets up snags that thing down from brock bowers it's raps man bobcats today we finally learned what happens when you stack all teams against each other in a global conquest we learned that as cool as the Mac was, the Sun Belt is superior coming straight out of North America. What a ride it has been. I hope you've enjoyed and soaked up all of this as much as I have, man. I've absolutely loved making this series and Imperialism's a lot of fun. And yeah, you could just sense Jaden Daniels was under a lot of pressure. He knew this game was over off his back foot, just forced a mistake. The Sun Belt reigns supreme. Your world champion right here, folks. The Texas State Bobcats led by Grayson McCall, ex-Coastal Carolina quarterback. You have all your answers and more right here. This was a conquest. This was quite the ride. Huge shout out to the Texas State Bobcats for coming through and winning an imperialism. And to the victor, the satisfaction. They get to knock off Ole Miss at every remaining continent and then populate their logo across the globe. Now the world is under Texas State reign. Sending out NCAA 14 the right way with a bang. A global imperialism conquest for the ages. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button and keep it here with King Sponge for so much fresh content to soak up with EA College Football 25 right around the corner and you're not going to want to miss any of it.